Hey everyone, I wanted to go over connecting up uh, one additional camera. That's one I just barely got. I didn't, have, uh, I didn't have it when I shot the last video, but I wanted to cover it anyway because uh, it's one we're going to be using uh, for some of our events. Uh, it's actually this little tiny guy right here. It's about the size of a tennis ball. This is the Blackmagic Micro Studio camera. We'll be using that kind of uh, locked off feed, uh, usually in the back of the room, kind of wide. I can't go super, super wide with the lenses that I've got for it, but uh, we can at least give it a shot. So. This is actually a 4K camera, so uh, when we uh, start shooting everything in 4K, we'll be able to use that camera as well. So, uh, in addition to being small, um, it's got some different connections on it, uh, partially because it is small. Uh, while it does connect with an S, it does uh, use an SDI signal. It's actually uh, done on some very small connectors, and uh, zoom in here. All right, so these are, the, these are the actual connectors. These are a lot smaller than a normal B and C. Uh, this is actually called a DIN connector, and there's gonna be two of them. This camera, like a lot of the uh, other equipment that we use, has a bi-directional communication. So um, it communicates, uh, it sends video to the switcher, and then the switcher communicates back to, the, back to it. And the reason for that in this particular case is that actually allows the uh, camera to be controlled from the switcher software. So we can control things like ex exposure. Um, we can also set the zoom and focus and even color the camera. So we've got a pretty powerful uh, DaVinci Resolve-like coloring capability built right into the camera. So uh, you won't need to know that for, for setup, but we do need to make two separate connections there. And one thing I've done is I, I've, I've, when I made these cables, I, I color coded them. So it's gonna be easier to, to uh, connect them and follow them and see where they go. So uh, if we look at the wider shot here, as you can see there, there's yellow and green on, on both ends. The other ends of these cables are actually uh, standard BNCs. They're, they're the female BNCs instead of the male BNCs that we typically find on most of the cables, but they are BNCs nonetheless. And what we're actually going to do with these is these are basically just considered adapter cables. Uh, they're only a few feet long. Um, they'll be connected to some longer BNCs that will be run directly to the switcher rack. So with this cable, we don't use the optical lines. We don't need to. Uh, the downside to that is we're going to be limited to probably about 300 feet or so away from the switcher. Shouldn't normally be an issue, but uh, unlike fiber, we can't run miles and miles should we ever need to go more than a few hundred feet. So anyway, so we'll start uh, by actually setting up the camera itself. So. Uh, the camera is an interchangeable lens camera. So right now, we just got the lens cap on it. Uh, and when we go to set this up, we'll, we'll actually be putting a lens on the, ca on the camera. So we'll take the lens cap off, and we'll be selecting one of the two lenses that I, that I happen to have. I've got this little tiny one. It's actually normally quite a bit smaller than that. Uh, it's extended at the moment. Normally, it wouldn't be. Uh, this is the wider of the two lenses that I've got. And then I've got this other lens. This is a longer focal length. So this one is 14 to 42 millimeters. This one is 40 to 150. So if we need to do a tight shot from somewhere, we can use this one. If we're doing something a little wider, we can use this little guy. So for purposes of this demonstration, I'm gonna use a little one. So we remove the back lens cap, remove the front lens cap, and then there are a couple of red dots. I don't know if you can see them on camera or not, but there's one right there, and there's one right there on the lens. You'll match those up, and then twist clockwise to lock it in place. Once you've done that, the lens is actually installed and we're ready to mount on the tripod. So that's what the camera looks like when it's more or less ready to be mounted. Uh, next thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna use the tripod plate. So it looks like this. This will get mounted on the bottom. On the bottom of this, there is an arrow indicating which way the front of the lens should go. And so we're gonna face that towards uh, the front of the camera. Now the camera has tripod screws that you can use on, e on both the top and the bottom. We're going to normally want to use the one on the bottom, which there's actually three screws. We'll use the one in the middle. And what we'll do is we'll put the plate on there with the screw in the middle position. Screw that down until it's fairly snug. It doesn't need to be super tight. It, uh, it's not going to be a problem if it's if it's not 
really, really snug. Uh, but put that on there. At that point, we'll put it on the tripod. The way you do that uh, on this tripod, you make sure that this lever, let's see if we can get a tighter shot of that. Yeah, there we go. So this lever right here, it needs to be pushed over to the right. Usually it will be, but if not, you push it over to the right. And then the camera goes in place by putting the front there and then snapping it down into place. And it will click and lock once it's actually been placed properly. If it doesn't lock like that, it's not properly secured. Uh, and you can double, double check by actually trying to move it around. It's really sturdy, so if it's locked properly, it's not going anywhere. And as it, as it locks in place, this lever will actually snap to the left uh, in the locked position. If we want to be really secure, there's a gold little lever we can flop there, and then the lever, the lever that opens it can't be opened, so the camera can't actually come off. So I don't normally bother with that because normally people, people aren't messing with it, but the option is there. Okay. With that, with that done, we can actually start making some connections. So, uh, first connections we're going to make are actually the video connections. So, grab the two cables that we've got here. Make sure we get the smaller end. And these just push and, push and lock in place. So you'll take it, Push and push and lock. And it'll just, it'll click. And once it's on there, it's locked pretty good. It's not coming off. Not coming off very easily. So you'll do that for both cables. I'm putting the yellow on the top, the green on the bottom. It doesn't really matter as long as we know which is which when we get to the other end. The top connection is the output. The bottom connection is the input. So take these SDI cables. We've got these two. Then we're going to have some longer SDI cables that we run to the switcher. So I've got those run here. This one runs to one of the camera inputs. And so as uh, input on the switcher comes from the output on the camera. In this case, the output is yellow. So I'll take this connection, lock it into place. And then I have another one here. This comes from one of the program outputs of the rack. And that will be the green, so push and twist to lock. And with that, the video connections for the camera have been made, at least for the ones that are used for the actual event. Um, there's, an, there's an HDMI connection on the right here um, that's used for setting up the camera. It does output the video signal, but it also has the menuing system and some other, some other guides for shooting. If someone wanted to, they could actually use this for a real camera for a show. Uh, you put a, put a monitor on top, uh, plug in a headset on the left, and you've got talkback, and you've, you've got a monitor to see what's going on. Um, it works reasonably well uh, for that purpose. However, we won't be using that. So the other thing that we're going to be connecting, that is required, absolutely required, is this monster squid-like thing here. This has a ton of different connections on it. We're only going to be going to be using one, and that's the power connection. So you look for one that says power in plus 12 volts, and we're going to, we're going to, that's the one we're going to be connecting. So I happen to have power supply already plugged in. There will be a power supply in in the bag with this camera, so I'll plug that into the 12 volt in, and then that plugs into the right side of the camera. It's a sort of a D-shaped connector. So you might make sure you want to get it lined up properly, uh, put it in place, and then use the thumb screws to lock it down. And as you watch there, you can see that the camera powered up, and the white light on top, and the lens actually extended itself. So with that, the camera is actually powered on, and I can see that it's outputting video. Now, uh, for purposes of my convenience, I'm going to turn this thing around. There are some menu buttons on the right side, um, and I will actually show you some of the menu. Uh, in order to do that, what I have to do is connect an HDMI cable from the right side of the camera to a monitor. And I've got this little battery-powered monitor that you can you can borrow and use. All right, so. 
show my ugly mug here. All right, so just for that's the shot. It's not focused at the moment because I haven't set the camera to focus. Let me actually do that. Sometimes it gets it, sometimes it doesn't. Might have to do some manual adjustments. But when when you get to this point, when you're setting up the camera, uh, you'll work with me or. Uh, if I'm not directing somebody else, you know, whoever's directing, to manually control the camera, because the camera is actually being controlled from the com from the computer. Uh, it's not done. There's n there's no focus controls on the camera itself. So if we need to focus the camera, we'll do it remotely. All right. It's uh, not perfect, but. And it, it'll work for what we're doing. Anyway, um, so as we're doing this, um, here, here, here's actually the view coming out of the HDMI port. This is what I'm seeing on the monitor. Uh, the menu buttons on here will allow you to navigate the menu. Uh, the most important one here is going to be a, the setup camera number. Uh, to navigate through these menus, you use the up and down buttons. And that gives you access to these five different menu headers and then you use the set button to select one. So this camera number here is, is pretty important. If this camera number is wrong, then we actually won't be able to control the camera remotely. because This is the identifier that the system uses in order to commit, send commands from the software back to the camera. So in this case, I'm plugged into input 7, and so I've actually preset the 7 there. So if I'm going to change that, you press set button up and down to change it, and then menu when you're done. Uh, occasionally, we may also need to set the video format. Uh, I've already done that here, but that's done through the camera menu, and it's the first option down. Oops. So, set, and then camera, uh, video format. I hit the set button, and you can change that. In this case, we're shoot I'm shooting 1080p, 2997, and so I'm going to leave it at that. Sometimes we will shoot 1080i, uh, also another time we will shoot 1080p. Uh, it's 5994. So it just depends on the, the event and what the need is. So with with that set, that actually takes care of all the setup for the for the um, in the menus of the camera. At that point, we can actually disconnect the HDMI port, and the camera is ready to go. Uh, you'll want to take a minute to aim the camera at whatever whatever it is we're shooting, and and work with the director in order to make sure that the zoom on the lens is correct. You can actually adjust the zoom. There's a little tiny lever um, on there. Let me turn it around and switch to that shot. And as I'm, yeah, the, as I'm moving the lever up and down, it's zooming in and out. And that can also be controlled remotely from the switcher software as, as well. So uh, you won't be able to see it, but on the top of the camera, the white light turns red when the camera is actually live. And I won't be able to show you that because have to have a mirror and I don't have one of those handy. So anyway, uh, with that, you just tie off the wires, make it all look neat, and you're good to go. And then uh, taking everything down is basically the reverse of setting it up. Uh, you want to have lens caps, put lens caps on, uh, remove the lens from the camera, put it all in the bag, uh, complete with the power supply and, and everything. So so that's about it. That's how we set up the Blackmagic Studio, my, Micro Studio camera when we're shooting an event and using that camera. So thanks for watching.